TV Crazy Man here. Today we talk about Abbott and Costello, mostly on their bloopers and their goofs and a few fun trivia facts along the way, uh, like their comic book series is based on a cartoon show and uh, the Three Stooges. Well, there was actually two Stooges from the Three Stooges that was in the show or in the show in the movies. We'll talk about that later. I'm not going to go over there, but all those lines I tell you. I'm going to start going the other way. I'm not going to go argument. Oh, no, I'm not. So let's get started. In Abbott and Costello Meet the Mummy, Abbott and Costello continuously call each other by their real names. Lou, Lou, what's the matter? Hey, Abbott, where you going? <laughs> but in the credits, they go by Pete Patterson and Freddie Franklin. What's strange about it, Lou? I actually like the fact that they use their real names. It's less confusing. They should have done that on all their movies, really. Folder three, page three. Hey, you know the pictures that you took? You know, it looks a little iffy from my small computer screen, but to me it looks like there's a lot of blank pages in that newspaper. What do you think? Is it the lighting or is that just a blank page? What makes you so dumb? Watch Costello in this scene turn into a stuffed dummy. Pick him up. <laughs> well, you know, they had to do something because I don't think Abbott was a weightlifter or anything. <laughs> Mike gonna have trouble with you now. Not me, Lou. I love old monster movies, especially Bud Abbott and Lou Costello meet Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde with Boris Karloff. In this movie, Costello got to get into the act of turning into a monster along with Boris Karloff. In this movie, Costello also interacts with a Frankenstein's monster wax figure that comes to life just a little bit when it gets hit with electricity. A little bit later on, we'll get to the movie where Frankenstein meets Happy Costello. Well, the interesting thing is that George Washington here is a wax statue, but he blinks. The same thing happened on an episode of the Wild Wild West when a lady was supposed to be a mannequin. You know, I think it was cheaper to have an actor dress up like a statue or a mannequin than to have an actual mannequin made. In this scene, one of the uh, hides jumps onto a moving bicycle that's ridden by an uh, older lady. Who are you talking to? Who actually gets scared younger. Now see, I always thought that getting scared or having a traumatic experience would make you age faster, not go up. You know, in reverse. You know, they sure do have strange grass in these parts. It almost looks like uh, thin paper. Or maybe some kind of carpet. I'm just not sure. In the 1950 movie Abbott Costello in the Foreign Legion, there's one scene where their, their Jeep gets hit in the windshield with a bullet, then the hole disappears, and then it comes back later on. The really interesting thing about this scene, though, is the reaction from the actress. It kind of looks like something may have hit her in the eye caused by, by this special effect. I think something was hitting Costello in the face, too. I'll be honest, I really don't know how they did this effect, but I would be curious to know. If you happen to know, please let me know in the comments. Also in this movie, the sky appeared to have strange seams or divides in it in several places. Which means, of course, they must have filmed a lot of it indoors, and the sky was really just a backdrop. Ah, uh, poison ivy. Now you made me say a rash word. The movie Africa Screams came out in 1949 and is now in the public domain. It featured two of the three stooges, Shemp Howard and Joe Besser. Shemp was working as a stooge during this time, and Joe would take Shemp's place in the stooges' shorts after Shemp died in 1955. Shemp was also in the Abbott Costello movies Buck Privates, In the Navy, Hold That Ghost, and It Ain't Hay. Joe Besser was in several episodes of the Abbott and Costello show that ran from 52 to 53 before he became a stooge. Harry, did you answer the door? No. Do I have? All right, here we go. Camera. Harry, did you answer the door? Oh, Bobby, stop! That was actually Bobby Barber. He was hired by Abbott Costello, believe it or not, to disrupt the shoots and cause chaos to keep them on their toes and create bloopers. All you do is snap at me. Me snap at you? Now 
always got to laugh. Me snapping at him. Why should you laugh? <laughs> I usually want to ruin that boat and behave yourself. Stop snapping at me. Me snapping at you? Yeah. Got <laughs> <laughs> it? That's the mark. Why should this happen to me? I, I planted him right here. Me, who's been so good to his friends. They've got to be here. They must be here. My diamonds, where are they? Where are my diamonds? Here's your damn diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> got it? Rebuild that trap? Are you a <laughs> Keep walking. How did you ever get into this mess? I don't understand. Go on. Keep going. Hey, uh, keep going. I got my eye on you. What are you trying to do? Make a monkey out of me? I see it. <laughs> Quiet. All right, go ahead. Camera. Keep going, Stanley. I'm bringing you back to camp all alone, single-handed. I suppose as a kid you got into bad company, eh? And got away with it. The first time. Now keep going. Keep, keep going. Keep going there. Keep going there. What's the matter? You've been eating olives, eh? Those wild olives. Eh? Come here. Keep going. What happened? What a disgrace! Please, just let it the camera. Stanley. Stanley, where have you been? I've been searching this jungle. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> now, this one isn't a blooper. It just a, uh, happens to be one of the most hilarious scenes from the movie, I think, thanks to Joe Besser. Why'd you bring me away out here? Now what am I going to do? What am I going to do with the boats I was going to buy, the buildings I was going to buy, the railroads I was going to buy? Put that down. That's a fine how do you do. Nice goings on from a pal, from a friend. I never, I never expected from you. I'll have to go into bankruptcy, that's all. That's all that's left for me to do. And what'll my friends say? To think that you, my bosom friend. Look, where are you going with the water? Oh, my tent's on fire! Well, what have you got to say for yourself? I now let's go to Abbott Costello meet Frankenstein from 1948. When Dracula and the Wolfman are fighting with Costello, caught in the mill, Frankenstein starts to move and one of his electrodes comes right out of his neck. It's actually kind of gross, if you think about it. All right, camera. You're Wilbur Gray? Yes, sir. Then you must be Chick Young. Yeah. I've been looking all over town for you. My name's Talbot. Well, you didn't have to look far. We were in jail. Yeah, I know all about that. You see, I'm the one who telephoned you not to deliver those bodies. I knew they were alive. Uh-huh. I was imagining things, huh? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You got that right? Uh-huh. Where did that Camera! Are you a little bird? Got it. Got Now watch this as uh, Abbott Costello's hired prankster follows Bella Lugosi down the steps. Oh, Carol. Oh, should be careful. A person could be killed that way. Here we go. All right, camera. Of course not. Silly boy. Oh. <sighs> boy, I'm floating on the cloud of crap. <laughs> Those crates. You've been here all the time. Now get me those crates. You've been here all the time. How long have you been here? Five minutes. Five minutes? What are you beeping about? I think I screwed up the whole thing anyway. Yeah. Glenn Strange played Frankenstein said that at one point that he could never get through this scene because Stella would just not stop cutting up. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> now Bella Lugosi, what they said, was a, a super serious guy. Now he didn't care if everybody else cut up with their scenes, but when it was his turn to deliver a line, he wanted everything to go just right. Real thing. Yes, right on the McDougal's House of Horrors. 
for an odd hallucination. But... <laughs> Here's a goo from the movie Buck Privates. Costello bends down with his tie on and loses it instantly. Then he raises up and then it's back on. It's kind of interesting, a tie that comes on and off when you bend down and you get back up. In the movie Hold That Ghost, I think they were using an x-ray vision camera. I mean, why does it seem like the dashboard is always disappearing on all these old movies? What's the matter? You a tough guy? Yeah. All right. You're wasting the... You know, it sounds like to me Abbott is calling Lou Herbie, Herbie, which is his name on Buck Privates. In this movie, Keep Him Flying, it was Heathcliff. You see, I told you they should have kept the real names in all the movies. It would have been so much easier. No confusion. What's come over you all of a sudden? I Keep know. quiet. Don't give me any arguments. You want it? Yes. <laughs> this whole scene from Ride em Cowboy makes you think the Matrix is glitching somehow. After Costello's just came through the door, the guy in the back closes it for him, twice. Then Abbott's cigarette seems to just pop into his mouth out of nowhere. When I find cheating, I'll shoot his hat off. Hello. Oh, What's <laughs> The same kind of weird glitch occurs in the movie Who Done It when Abbott runs through a door first, and suddenly it's Costello that's coming out the other end. I want my mama. And now some bloopers from the wistful widow of Wagon Gap. Oh man, 75. That's how old I'll be before I take Jake from back to the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> That's a gold piece. A 20 dollar gold piece. No. Oh boy. I don't know where the hell I go from there. <laughs> he wants to keep it confidential. Oh, a secret. You don't want nobody to know. You don't. <laughs> okay. How would you like to earn a couple of fast horses and a stake to California? Gee, a couple of fast horses I'd like to take, but I'll tell you one thing. I'm a, I, I sincerely don't know that line. <laughs> Will you excuse me, please? Okay, bye. I thought you went home with a widow. I did, but I came right back. Oh, Mr. Frame, I wish you'd have won me here in this poker game, or whatever the hell it was, because... <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid. I'm still afraid. I'm still afraid. And your first duties is to go to the ranch. And this one wasn't as good as the last one. She just came into town. She's right over there. Oh, yes. Sounds like W.C. Field. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Jim. Boy, it's Freeman. His gang going to be fooled. What are you getting at? You know that gold shipment you used told me was coming in tomorrow? Well, boy, it's ready for her. Get what I'm driving at. Yes, ma'am. But you're trying to hitch up your horse to the wrong actor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Camera. Get what I'm talking And remember, you have been bossing me long enough. And it's about time that the worm has turned, and the dog has something, and... <laughs> <laughs> All right, action, camera. What's your hurry, bud? Keep your shirt on. You just told me to take my shirt off. I told you to keep your shirt on, taking your shirt off. How can I keep my shirt off if I take my shirt off? Oh, right. <clears throat> Herbie, don't, don't, don't let him do it to you, Herbie. Don't let him do it to you, Herbie. It's too late. This man is being bald. I'll take it. Now oh, look, uh, while you're over the bank arranging your loans, why, I'll, uh... <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Well, I have an expert check it. Well, explain it to him with the model. Why, sure. Well, sure, go ahead. You know, I think I screwed the whole line in the first place anyway. <laughs> well, well, well. My favorite detail. Mine. Isn't this closing? Closing, oh, yes. yes, it's On a trivia note, do you remember the Abbott and Costello cartoon show that ran between 1967 and 68? Unfortunately, Lou Costello had passed away by 1959, so his voice was done by Stan Irwin. I'm a bad boy. Bud Abbott was available to do his character's voice. Uh, don't get excited, Costello. Who's excited? A comic book series based on the show was produced by Charlton Comics and ran for 22 issues.
So today we talk about Abbott and Costello. Goopers, goopers, bloopers, bloopers. With their bloopers and their goose and their comic book series. Uh, well, a little bit about that, not much. Uh, yeah. And uh, some fun facts along the way, like their cartoon series and their comic book. Comic books, yeah. Plus a few trivia facts that you may not have known, or you may already know, and uh, we're just talking about it anyway. Please subscribe, hit the bell, so you don't miss any future videos. Uh, did I say subscribe already? In the comments below, because, yeah, where am I at? I'm not sure. Okay. I didn't see a thing. TV Crazy Man here. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. What's wrong with you? What's come over you all of a sudden? Well, that's it. I appreciate y'all watching so far, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell so you don't miss any future videos. That's very important. Uh, click like. Uh, oh yeah, and comment. Please comment. Let me know what you thought about the video. And uh, share it with other people. Thank you so much. Y'all have a great day.